Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Sunday services of Bong Jok Baptist Church. We're so thankful that you're here, and we hope this morning, as you tune in with us, that you will be blessed by the preaching of God's Word, and that we'll grow together as we worship the Lord. We want to start our services this morning with a few announcements for you, and so that you'll know what's going on in our church and know how to pray and follow along with our church family. We'd like you to take a moment, like this video, check in, uh, comment on it, and share that video so that people can watch along with you. We want to get the word out to as many people as possible that they can watch this and they can see the message this morning. If you could take a moment and do that for us, it would be greatly appreciated. We have started back up our English outreach classes, and those are every Saturday from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And if you live locally in Bangkok and you know somebody who would like to study English, these classes are free. We have a wonderful time, and it's a great way to connect people with our church. And so if you'd like to uh, invite someone to that, those classes are going. Registration is every Saturday at 6 p.m. They don't need to come ahead of time. If they get here at 6, we can register them, get them in a good class and uh, start teaching them English and hopefully introduce them to the Lord. So please be helping us get word out about English classes. As a church, we're trying to remind our church family to be praying for a few items this week. First off is the country of Thailand. For the past several days, uh, Thailand has been having protests every night, and it's been a hard thing for many people in our community. And so we're asking our church to pray for the folks who are out there, for the government, for our country as a whole. Uh, please be praying for the country of Thailand. Also, please be in prayer for our children's ministry. We've started out some new curriculum for them, and our children's classes are just going very well right now. So please be praying for them, for the teachers that are going to be using that, and that God would help us reach families through that class. Also, please be in prayer for new English students. We have many who have signed up and have already been coming, studying English together with us. Uh, please pray for them as we try to introduce them to Jesus. Pray that English students would get saved. Also, many of our missionary families are currently stuck outside of Thailand and are trying to get back here to Thailand to serve the Lord uh, alongside of us. Please be in prayer for them. And then we're so excited. A few weeks ago, we had a couple of teenagers accept the Lord as their Savior. And so we're very, very grateful for that. But uh, please be in prayer for them. There's some adjustment in their life that they're going through. They just need your prayers. Uh, please be praying for those new teen believers. We're so thankful uh, that they got saved. Always wonderful to see new believers in our church. This week, our Bible reading will be through the book of Luke, chapter 8 through chapter 14, one chapter a day. Please read along with us and let's study God's word together. God's blessings are great. The Lord blesses us in so many ways. We want to remind our church family, don't forget to give back just a portion of what God has given you. He's been so faithful to us. Let's be faithful in giving back to him of our offerings and tithes. And you can do that the Kung Tai bank account of the Bang Jok Baptist Church. That number is 597-037-8046. 597-037-8046. You can send your tithes and offerings there. You can also drop them off at the church office throughout the week. Or if you join us in person, you can give them during our offering time of the service. Thank you for your faithful giving to the Lord. Uh, this Sunday is our last week in the book of Hebrews for our Sunday school hour. We'd like to ask you to please join us in person at 10 a.m. for that Sunday school study. If you cannot, we do have Zoom classes available where you can watch from home and you can join us for that study. Please just send a message to the church and we will send you the link so that you can study with us uh, this closing week of the book of Hebrews. It's been a wonderful study for us. Also, please be uh, praying for our Thai children's Bible classes. Again, those will be starting up just in a little bit at 930 and they go to 11. So one more reminder. Please be praying for these kids, be praying for their families, pray that God would bring people to our church and folks would get saved through this outreach of our church. Once again, it's a blessing to have you here this morning for our sermon time. Please take your Bibles and get ready as Pastor Ricky comes to share the message with us this morning. Okay, we're very thankful that you come and worship with us here at the Bangkok Baptist Church in Bangkok, Thailand. You know, uh, we really appreciate the, uh, the honor of presenting the gospel from Bangkok. The Lord has been uh, uh, doing a lot of great work here in the city of Bangkok, and we're thankful for the 15 million people that we have here to be able to get the gospel out to. And so there, we understand that there's so many people that are uh, speak English and from different countries, and so we're thankful to be able to 
come up on Facebook Live and to give out the gospel on Sunday morning. Last week, we were discussing worship. You know, as we're studying out the book of John, and, we're, and what we've been doing is we've been studying the words of Christ and, and not studying in the other books. All the other books are important. But we wanted to study about the words of Christ. And so this is a specific study about the teachings of what Christ said in his ministry so that we can understand Jesus Christ a little bit better. When Jesus had came back from Cana, from the wedding in Cana, had come down in Jerusalem, he had come down to Jerusalem to be able to worship. It was the time of the Passover. And so during that time, millions of people, hundreds of thousands of people, up to a million people would come into Jerusalem to worship during this time. And so we explained to you that last week, and what happened was, was that people were coming in to worship. They had several men, different areas in to worship. Well, the outer courts were for the Gentiles. And so what they had done was, instead of leaving it open for the Gentiles to be able to come and worship Jehovah, they had changed it into a marketplace. And so what had happened was, instead of the people coming in and preparing their hearts to worship God, Jehovah, they were having to think about commerce. They were having to think about buying the lambs and the doves and the, and the cattle that was coming in, the oxen that they were bringing in for the worship. See, so many times the people would be coming in from different areas and they couldn't carry the lambs the whole way. Several times they're, they're traveling for days. So as they're traveling in and they're coming in and when they're bringing in, they come into the temple. Well, the temple had a guideline. Each of the animals had to be pure. And so if you came in with your animal, they would check out your animal and say, well, I don't think this lamb is very pure, but I do think we have a lamb over here that you could buy. And so the people might look at and go, well, he's the priest, he knows, and he's, making, uh, he's helping us to make the right kind of sacrifice. But what was happening was, was that the, the head religious people we're not just thinking about worship, but they were thinking about making money. And so instead of people coming in and preparing their hearts, they were setting up barricades. They were setting up problems for the people that they had to go around this problem and this problem so that they come in to worship. And the Bible says that it made Christ angry. When the people come in, they had different coins from different nations, and they had to use the Jewish coins. And so there was a place there that they could exchange the coins. And so as Jesus is coming in there to exchange the coins, uh, uh, people coming in to exchange his coins, Jesus got angry. He said, what are you doing? He said, what you're doing right now, you're changing my father's house into a house of merchandise. And so Jesus got angry and he tossed the coins aside. Now what happened was, as the people saw this. Number one, I want you to notice, nobody stopped them. Okay? You have to understand that the Pharisees had their own police. The Jewish had, the people had their own police there. They didn't stop them. The people that were, were selling the animals didn't stop them. But they came before Jesus, and, and when they came before Jesus, they asked Jesus, says, who gives you the right to do this? Who do you think you are? And the Bible sits there and tells us that Jesus stopped. And he explained to them right there and then. He told them in John chapter 2, verse 16. He said, and he said unto them that soul does, Take these things hence, not my father's house. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Now this is interesting. I find this really interesting because he had told the people who sold the doves. He told them, he said, Take these things and make not my father's house, not my spiritual father's house, but make my father's house a house of merchandise. He is telling the people, he goes, I am the son of God. And you are changing what my father had built here as a place to come and worship, as a place of commerce. You're taking their minds off of Jehovah God and you're putting them into making money. And so in verse 19, Jesus answered, and they asked him and said, who do you think you are? In verse 19, Jesus
Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Now, now this is the problem. The people didn't understand what he was talking about. When Jesus was telling them that you destroy this temple and in three days I'll build it up, the people were thinking about the building itself. They had said, then the Jews, 40 and 6 years, was this temple and building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? He said, he said in 46, 46 years, it took us to build this. And you think you can do it in three days? See, they didn't understand. The Bible tells us, it said, but he spake of the temple of his body. Jesus was given a prophecy that's going to happen two, two and a half years in the future. When Jesus dies on the cross and he is risen again on the third day. Jesus is trying to explain them. And so many times Jesus uses a physical metaphor, something that they could see and understand for a spiritual understanding. But so many people's spiritual hearts were darkened. Even the apostles didn't understand. So many times when Jesus would speak to them, they didn't understand what Jesus was, was trying to say. And so you remember when the, when the apostles had went to the temp, uh, tomb, and as they went to the tomb, they thought that somebody had stolen the body of Christ. But the Bible says there, it said, but when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said, this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the words which Jesus had said. Two and a half years had passed since Jesus had made this prophecy. And the people didn't quite understand what Jesus was trying to explain to them. But when they went to the tomb and they saw that Jesus wasn't there, then they remembered the words of Jesus Christ. See, it was all about the resurrection. Everything Jesus based on the resurrection. The preaching of Jesus Christ was to get people to remember who God was. To understand how much God loved them and their responsibility toward God. And to help them take their mind off of the physical and put it on the spiritual, help them to take their minds off of what's happening around them right then, and put it on the kingdom of God. The miracles that Jesus did was to help people to understand that Jesus was not an ordinary man. But the resurrection was to prove that Jesus was the Son of God. Everything on the resurrection. Can you imagine people remembering something you said two and a half years ago? Can you even remember what you said to a person a week ago? Or maybe a month ago, a conversation that you had somebody? I can't even remember who I spoke to a week ago if I don't look at my calendar. But at that time, Jesus is beginning his ministry in about two and a half years in the future. The people are sitting there and talking about what Jesus had said. When Jesus was going before the high priest, and, he, and when Jesus was going before the Sanhedrin, they brought in false witnesses trying to find something that they could judge Jesus on. And some of the people came in there and they said, I remember that Jesus said that he would destroy the temple and that in three days he would raise it up. You remember the story? When Jesus was crucified and they put him in the tomb and the Pharisees went before Pilate and said, you know, Jesus said if he died in three days he would be risen. This is so important. We've got to stop this. And so they put the, the Roman military in front of the tomb. 
to stop the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. They understood what it meant. The Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees, they understood if Jesus rose on the third day, it would literally prove that he was the Son of God. And so they tried to stop the resurrection. See, the resurrection was the crowning point of Jesus' ministry. The resurrection was the apex of everything that the Lord had taught and done. It was to prove who the Lord was. Let's read about the story in the book of John, chapter 2, starting with verse 16. It said, And he said unto them, that soul does, Take these things hence, not my father's house, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us? seeing that's, that's these things. He said, what can you show us to prove that you have the right? And Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up. Then said the Jews, forty and six years was this temple in the building, and will thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men. And he did not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. So, the scripture talks about this, that everything was based on the resurrection. The proof of who Jesus was was not in the miracles. And the proof of what Jesus was teaching all laid upon in being raised from the dead on the third day. We worship on Sunday because Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. Everything is based on that as a time of remembrance. Without the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, then, then preaching the gospel of salvation has no purpose. Without the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, then our hope in eternal life is futile. Without the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, then our witnessing to other people about who God is is, is a lie. Without the resurrection, we are still in our sins and we're eternally lost. Without the resurrections, we who are Christians, especially those who are Christians, we're to be pitied, we're to feel sorry for, because everything in life that we have is based on the preaching and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if Jesus hadn't been raised from the dead, then we have a useless faith. So think about it. What part of the resurrection plays in our salvation? In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting with verse 12, Paul talks about that. He's discussing with some people in Corinth that has a problem with the resurrection. They believe that when they died that they would not be resurrected from the dead on the third day. And Paul is explaining that we will be resurrected from the dead just like Christ was resurrected from the dead on the third day. And if Jesus, if we are not to be resurrected, then the resurrection of Jesus is not true. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 12, he said, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say ye among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and our faith is also vain. Paul is explaining to him, he said, if Christ had not been risen from the dead, 
then I have no purpose in preaching. He said, in actuality, he says, your faith has no purpose. Paul, Paul's a person who gave his whole life into preaching. Talking about the resurrected Christ. Paul was the one that went through and he endured beatings. He was stoned twice, left for dead. Paul spent years in prison only because of the preaching of the gospel. He wouldn't stop because he had faith in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't in it to make money. We see so many times that he had to work. He was a tent maker and he made the tent to provide for himself so he could tell other people about the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't getting famous. And, and as we look at it, he continued to preach because he believed in the risen Savior. See, Paul explains it. He said, yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, and so be that the dead rise not. He said, okay, if Christ did not rise up, then I'm a liar. Everything I have taught is not true. You don't have to believe it. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. He said, because Jesus is raised, we're going to rise too from the dead. He explained to him, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, you are yet in your sins. He said, there is no forgiveness of sins if Jesus is not raised from the dead. Many years ago in, in Singapore, there was a man that in his apartment, he built a guillotine. And he wrote a note. He says, I am dying. I'm going to kill myself for my friend. And he pulled the rope. The blade came down and cut off his head. That's a wonderful gesture. I mean, that's a very noble gesture. He was willing to die for his friend. But it was utterly useless. It had no purpose. Because him dying for his friend did not save his friend from hell. But when Jesus died on the cross, it saved us from hell. But his resurrection proved that we could trust in that. And we could put our faith in that. Paul is trying to explain to us, he said, then also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. He said, all those who have gone before us, all those who have died, they call it sleep. And he says, all those who are asleep in Christ, he said, they're not going to be risen up. He said, they're going to lay in the ground. Their body's going to be there. They're not going to go anywhere. Or they're going to hell. Verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Isn't it true? If... We spend our whole life trusting in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we spend our whole life trusting that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he is not the Son of God, we're wasting our time. We're wasting our purpose in life. Missionaries going throughout the world are wasting their lives telling other people about the resurrected Jesus Christ. Look at verse 20. The first word in verse 20 is very interesting. He said, but. He said, now I want you to take everything I just told you. He said, I want you to take about not having faith and talking about your faith is useless and how that you're not going to have life in, in, in eternity. You're not going to have forgiveness of your sins. He goes, but now is Christ risen from the dead. He goes, now I want you to understand. He is risen. And become the first fruits of them that slept. And so he's saying because Jesus is risen from the dead, we have hope. He's the first fruit. He is the proof that we will rise again. 21, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Because of the sin of Adam, all men have sinned. But because of Jesus Christ, we all can have eternal life. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 
verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ is the first fruits. Afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming. So Jesus is our example. Jesus is showing us what's going to happen when we die. We're going to be resurrected also. So when we think about it, when we think about the tomb and Jesus dying and being placed in that tomb on that Sunday morning so many years ago, what if? What if Jesus rose from the dead? Then the teaching of Jesus is true. We can trust in the scriptures. We can trust in what Christ has taught us. Because he is the son of God. Then the preaching of Paul is true. Because all of Paul's teaching. First and Second Corinthians, the book of Romans, tells us about the love of God and how Christ had died for us and how we can trust in him. Then when we look at it, then our faith has a purpose. We're not trusting in a God of religion. We're not trusting in someone who established Christianity to follow his teaching. But we're trusting in a living, breathing who came to live among men to understand our life and then to die on the cross to pay for our sins. And our faith has a purpose. The way we live our life, the way that we endure the temptations that come into our life will have a purpose on that final day because our God is a living God. And we will have eternal life because we're trusting not in our work, but in the works of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can cometh unto the Father but by me, by the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? All of this is proven by the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. What if? What if Christ had risen from the people said, who do you say that you are? Who gives you the authority? Show us a sign that you are from God. And Jesus says, destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up. He wasn't talking about the building, the edifice that they had built there to worship God. But he was talking about his own life. He said to, in three days, I will rise up. This is the proof. I am going to prove to you that I am the Son of God. But the next two verses are very important. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. And needed not that any should testify of men, for he knew what was in man. See, what had happened, the Bible has said that the people there... They started to follow Jesus because of his miracles. And the words are, so, these are strong words. Jesus, the Bible doesn't say they didn't commit themselves to Christ. The Bible is saying that Christ did not commit himself to them. Why? Because they just followed him for the miracles. They just followed him for what Christ could do for them. They did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. And the Bible says right here, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. You can go to church, and you can sing the songs. You can even tithe, but you can't fool Christ. Christ knows what's in our heart. Christ knows whether we believe or we do not believe that he is the Son of God. So today the question is, how is your faith? <coughs> do you have a faith in a true living God? 
Do you have a faith in a Christ that died for your sins and rose again on the third day? Say, Pastor, I believe. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. He paid for my, for my sins at Calvary. I believe that he rose from the dead the third day. But you might say, but brother, please pray for me because there's some people that I know that don't believe. They don't live their life like they believe that there is a true and living God. <coughs> then we can pray for them. But the people have to see the faith in our life. Jesus says, I will prove to you who I am. And I can prove that on the third day. So today, as we worship on Sunday morning, a day that's been set aside because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a day of remembrance of his resurrection. Remember that everything <coughs> is based on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I'm thankful for today. Thank you for that you've done for us. <clears throat> Father, help us to put our trust in you. Not to put our trust in ourselves. To put our trust in you and on the third day that you rose again. Help us <clears throat> to live our testimony. Help us to go forward in faith and show our love for you. And God, we ask this all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.